and welcome to a very rare Sunday upload. Oh. So today we thought we'd give you a little, little behind the scenes look of something that we do that you might not be aware of, which is our podcast. Yes, we're podcasters as well we're as podcasters. YouTubers, right? We're, we're on all the mediums. All the mediums. Except for like the ones that talk to the dead. Actually, you um, probably did. Never mind. I'm, I'm, I was going to say I was... I'm not. Actually, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Because I'm not. <laughs> Intriguing. Yeah. Very medium-esque. Yeah. Um, so every Friday at 5pm, we do a podcast called... Friday 5pm. Yeah. In which we deconstruct the week. We talk about the stuff we've been up to. And more specifically, we talk about the video that went live that week. And we read through all the comments and discuss uh, our favourites and respond to them. Um, and also, we always get at the start of every single episode something weird that's happened to Brad. Because uh-huh. he's just one of those people. Uh-huh. And I can already feel he's <laughs> desperate to tell his for this week. Um, but we thought, you know, we, we, we get, we'd now get a mad 180,000 views yeah on our youtube channel right now but only about a thousand on our podcast yes yeah, so guys and girls we need to convert you you need to come and listen to us because i think this is the most honest we get the most like uh, we're well, totally unedited you, you say honest yeah what you mean is unedited yeah so if you really want to get a behind the scenes of mine and johnny's life um come and check out friday 5 p.m Come and check out the bubble. The bubble, Johnny. Look, tell us about the bubble, mate. Yeah, so the bubble, we actually launched it about two years ago. Uh, and that was sort of the origins of the podcast. And the bubble is all about getting people from outside beer to come in and talk about beer. So we've had we've had uh, alcohol charities. We've had chefs. We've had all kinds of people to get a perspective from outside. Yeah. And then we get people from the beer world to talk about stuff that they're passionate outside of their beer bubble, which is stuff like we had Evan from the Colonel, founder of the Colonel. He talked about cheese. He used to be a cheesemonger. And stuff like that. So it's it's trying to get outside of the very small sphere in which we kind of operate. And and Friday 5pm is also a little bit about that as well. It's just the lives mm. of two beer geeks and the fact that they happen to run a, a, a YouTube channel, which is on the verge of turning a profit. <laughs> so close. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what's going to follow is us recording uh, the episode of The Bubble that was due to come out on the 21st of August. We're running a little bit late, so we'll see if that happens. Why are we, why are we running late, Johnny? We're on late because Johnny uh, forgot to press record. Uh, <laughs> so, to be honest, Brad f- forgot to press record as well. Brad doesn't but know where to press Brad, record. Brad doesn't as far know as how I'm to concerned. use this because yeah. normally we're never. This is the first time we're in the same room recording this. Yeah. Usually I'm in South London, sitting at home with my laptop, and we're recording each phone. other on the phone. You're in North London, yeah. so we're we're using the. This is the full bubble pro podcaster setup yeah the idea of the friday 5 p.m was like to give people some entertainment on their way home commuting on a friday or you know it, once you put the kids to bed on a friday or whatever it is where you get just 20 minutes to yourself uh and then, and then we did it and then obviously nobody commuted for five months because COVID. Uh, so there we go anyway we're going to dive into the podcast you're going to see the magic of of podcast vision for a second and we'd love you guys to subscribe uh, it's on Apple Podcasts, it's on Spotify, it's on Stitcher, all the main platforms that there are for podcasts. So do please join us. And of course, remember that any comments you put in YouTube, we might well read out on the podcast. Uh, I, I actually listen on Spotify and I, I genuinely listen back to it, Johnny, because uh, I've got a terrible memory and, uh, and I just think you it's... You just hang up the phone and forget what we talked yeah, about. Yeah, kind of. And also, it's just great. I think uh, I'm a big... Po- I love podcasts. I love listening to podcasts. I think what we do is quite an easy listen. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're just two mates having a chat normally about something interesting if you like beer and you like nonsense then you know sign up yeah, join that's us that's basically what the YouTube channel is yeah. so yeah should we dive into the podcast let's do it let's do it podcast face on <laughs> hey beer geeks it's Friday it's 5pm which means it's time for the Friday 5pm podcast and it's definitely past time for me to find a better intro Hmm. <laughs> to this podcast <laughs> just an eyebrow raise from brad there how are we doing brad is i'm all right mate yeah i'm 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 pretty drunk i was hanging already <laughs> but now i'm drunk uh because i'm drinking some wicked beer and who you know where's that wicked beer from brad Ver- yeah this is an interesting one i'd say verdant what but, but you say homebrew well i made it yeah yeah so i mean i wasn't here i was here for the brew day but I think there's some something fishy's happened because this is way too good to be a homebrew. <laughs> you think I've filled this wonderful keg next to me with with verdant beer just I to troll you? I think you spent several hundred pounds on uh, pints of verdant to troll me, because honestly, if I was at a beer festival and I discovered this little beauty, I would be all over it. You'd be doing what Brad does best, which is like leaning on the bar 
with some poor bar barman or bar lady just just like another one of those and you'll be telling them stories the kind of stories you tell on the friday 5 p.m podcast all the time exactly. for the rest of the session exactly which isn't really the point of beer festivals the point of beer festivals mm. is to try lots of stuff and discover new things whereas you just not for you me just zone in on one and go yeah more of that please <laughs> i like the vibe i like if i find a vibe that i like i will i'm all over it yeah so i might i do a little bit of exploratory stuff and then i'll probably set up base somewhere and just just enjoy uh, people and life and yeah, like a vibe, good things. Vibe sticker. Vibes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah vibes. This, vibes. There, there is a sticker in that. Just sticker that says vibes and vibes. then your face on it. Yeah. Anyway, um, what's happened to you this week? I've promised we're recording this uh, for YouTube as well, just to try and get some more viewers coming over and, and stimulate some discussion. So we're filming this, and I've promised the people on YouTube a great yeah. Brad story. Yeah. What have you got? Well, usually I'm full of woe and, 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 and kind of trouble in the week that's passed. This week's not much different, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a scooter, which I've had for... So, like a, motor, a motorcycle, like a small motorcycle, 50cc scooter. Somewhere between a pedal scooter. Yeah, it doesn't have pedals, but it's not much faster than something you could <laughs> pedal. Yeah. Uh, it goes about 30 mile an hour. And I love this thing, Johnny. I've had it for at least 10 years, and it's a Japanese imported thing. It's called a Honda Zuma. It looks like a military vehicle. It's painted olive drab green, and I will never sell so this. So, what thing. is olive drab? Olive drab is like a military NATO color. Right. So it's um, olive drab is is an army green. Okay. Like a low shine army green, like a mid green. Camouflagey. Camouflagey, but without the camouflage. Yeah. Not the pattern, yeah. but the color. Just the color. Yeah. Just the color. It's a NATO color. Olive yeah. drab is. Uh, they call it OD. Anyway, if we say olive drab one more time, I'm going to cry. Let's. What What's happened to your olive drab yeah. scooter? So, <laughs> just pre lockdown, um, I was on a on a bit of a, a ride on it, and um, it was maybe February, I think, in the year. It was quite cold, and uh, the thing just started to conk out. It was about a mile away from home, and instead of going 30 miles an hour, it was going about three miles an hour yeah that's embarrassing and was, you're being hands, overtaken by walking well, my people. hands are freezing and i was like oh my god i've got to like try and get this thing home before it dies and uh, my anxiety was like off the chain because i love this thing and in my head i was like i've got to get home i've got to not get run over by fast casting fast passing vehicles um, that, that was a bold choice of words for a man that's drunk quite a lot of home <laughs> <room>. <laughs> I got it home anyway, Johnny. Yeah. And I, I'm vaguely mechanical. I took the thing apart a bit and I could see there was a problem with the drivetrain. Um, now, this was something I couldn't fix because I don't have a ra I don't have a impact driver. So I took it to my local garage and um, I thought I was all fixed. I, I, I got I bought this new thing called a variator. We put it Just in. Just making up words at this we, point. We offered it up and um, it, it, it basically shit a brick. Didn't fit the engine. Um, I managed to buy a variator on eBay for one pound. Uh, that was. I've got the, no reference point for that, but it sounds it, cheap. It's like this metal, this bit of turned metal that, that spins at like six thousand revs a minute. Um, and and this sort of salvage one we put in in yesterday, me and the, and the, the garage guy, it kind of worked, but the battery wasn't charged very well. Anyway, I left the garage and he told me to push it home, but as I left the yard. I started it and it started, so I went off on a mad ride. I got so you're very just like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll just wheel it home. I, yeah, and then I, I got, I got carried away. So I didn't wheel it home. Instead, I rode to Blackheath <laughs> on the top of Blackheath Mountain, which is a hill, right? It's a big old hill, and um, I think the battery just died on the way up. Basically, I got right up to the top, Johnny. And I sat there. It was a beautiful, glorious afternoon. I'd had a shitty day. You reveled in disobeying the mechanic. Oh, I turned, I turned the engine off. That's where I went wrong. <laughs> I sat down on a bench and I, I WhatsApp my girlfriend on a video call in my helmet. And I said, all right, babe, I'm on Black Heath. I've just ridden my motorbike. I'm so happy it's fixed. Um, and, and then you're like, I'll be home in 10. I'll be home in 10 minutes. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to poodle back. Yeah. Went to start the engine. <laughs> nothing. Uh, the battery was totally dead. I had to wheel the thing home for like four or five miles. Um, and then I had to go to a birthday party immediately afterwards. So uh, it was just all kinds of bad. But, uh, but Did I, you I, tell the fascinating story to the people at the birthday? I did. I kind of bored them with it a little yeah. bit. Um, some of them, Danny, whose birthday it was, I've known him since I was like 20. Did you steal Danny's thunder? No, definitely not. I didn't steal Danny's thunder. <laughs> not, with, not with the scooter chat. Right, but um, other things, well, other your dance things. moves, 
No, there weren't any dance moves. There was a there was a Dulux dog that what? was in the you know like the that, yeah no Andrex dog. Uh, well, no, they're two different dogs. Andrex is a Labrador puppy. No, Dulux is the sheep dog. Yes, sheep dog dog. So we went to the Dog and Bell in Deptford, which is an amazing old man boozer. Um, Jules yeah, great Holland camera drinks place. There. It's a camera pub. Yeah, real old pub. Um, we were sat in there and this, this dog called Monty kept coming up to us and he, very clever dog, it was pushing the door open to get out into the garden. Um, I don't know why I've, why I've gone off on this tangent. That's what you do, Brad. I went off on this tangent, I don't know why. Call it a Brad Monty, tangent. Monty, Monty, a Brangent. Basically, I had a great day yesterday. I had, ter- <laughs> I had a terrible day, then I had a great day and then I woke up this morning and I had a massive banging headache from all the beer that I drank. And you thought that what would solve that is a load of homebrew. <laughs> homebrew, right? Because everyone knows that homebrew doesn't give you a hangover. Yeah. I mean, homebrew has this reputation of being awful. Yeah. But given the technology we have, all the equipment we've been given by Malt Miller, the yeast we've been given by Lalamund and the, the, the endless advice I got from James, who's the head brewer at Verdant, that we'll be putting in the video that's all about this homebrew... Homebrew is now, it, it can be incredibly high quality, as we've yeah. just learned. Even in my hands, yeah, it can be high quality. So I think this is a hangover cure for you. Big time. And, and, and I, think, I, think, I, think, I think I need to retract that instantly. It, it shook me out of my funk um, coming over here, mostly because I had to get about six trains over because I... There we go, Bloody another sub story wasn't from working. Brad. But anyway, mate, I'm having such a great time. We're drink- I've probably had two pints of this now. Yeah, we have, and it's, it's 6.2. My 6.2%. But it is blowing my own trumpet. It is a beautiful IPA. Hey, I put some of that stuff in the brew day. You, you, put, you put some Magnum <laughs> hops in and some of the malt. Yep. Didn't do a lot else. Um, right, well, let's dig into this week's episode. Yes. So this week's episode was actually off the back of our live show that we did with London Craft Beer Festival two weekends ago so long ago already feels like a long time ago i was actually at little faith last night i went back wait you went back to yeah, the scene of the crime yeah so i was like um social distancing like doing the the elbow thing to all the staff there who are awesome and, I, and we had a great time hanging out with them and I, I stayed on afterwards and uh had a little bit of a party with them did after you hours. yeah yeah that, that's that's good. another brad move as well that's yeah, a brand was, yeah 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 um so yeah, so we did a live show, uh, a five-hour-long live show with London Craft Beer Festival. The weekend that London Craft Beer Festival was supposed to happen is now mm. happening in November. You can you can buy tickets now. Yeah. I'll put a link in the descriptor. Um, and as part of that, we filmed a load of stuff from from the local area. So we went to Brick Brewery. We met up with Five Points. Uh, we did a tour of of um, the McKellar Brew Pub. That was last week's video. This week's video was our brick tour. Yeah. Firstly, I'd like to apologise for the sound quality in the second half where we were doing the tasting. It was incredibly loud, and one of our microphones bailed on us, so that was frustrating. However, it's still audible. It's just not ideal. Um, but I mean, I, I I put this as the video title. I think Brick are one of the most underrated breweries in London, if not the UK. Got to be right. Yeah. I mean. We had a great double IPA, which shouldn't be the measure of a brewery, but it it often is because of what yeah. you know what people are drinking. But they had an incredible cellared lager, like an eight week Keller beer, and then you know their sours. If you've never had them, their sours are the best in the country. They take a very different approach to every single one, like varying the IBUs, the acidity, uh, the the malt bills, and you know obviously the amounts of of different ingredients going yeah. in. Whereas I think a lot of breweries take a kind of one size fits all approach and just go well we'll add 100 grams of that 100 well not 100 grams i'm thinking homebrew there a couple of kilograms of this fruit this fruit and this fruit and i think they take a really almost kind of chefy approach to getting balance mm. from their beers and none of them are like just massively fruity smoothie beers they're all really refreshing refined and therefore kind of complex beers even if they're very light and drinkable there's little notes popping off of different things that verbena one we had was was awesome yeah lemon verbena was oh what a beautiful beer that was um and so yeah we we put that live we we didn't think it was going to get huge views because that's what happens when you put a video of a an underrated brewery live but we really want to champion those guys because i think they make stellar beer big uh, time within and without the the core range i mean i was drinking keller bills keller pills sorry on my uh canoe i was on holiday last weekend uh last week in uh sussex yeah you talked about it last week on the podcast yeah i was oh did i really yeah i said here you go i'm repeating myself <laughs> like an old man so i won't go there yeah 
You give you give Brad a twenty minute window to talk every week, and he just repeats himself. But so you were drinking that while you were? Yeah, I was drinking Keller Pills. So I've, I I had my little cool box, my little Coleman cool box, in the front of the canoe, and I was reaching out and um, bringing him out. Cans. So good, man. Brad, Brad very sweetly got me a little Coleman box, which yeah. I'm going camping this weekend. I'm going up to Little Earth Project, nice, um, which is an amazing brewery and pub, and they've got a camping sites. So we're going there, and I'll be taking my little. A Brad Brad given uh, cool box Pleasure, for our beers. Mate. Thank you. No um, should we dive into the comments? The comment I picked it. out actually isn't from uh, the Brick video. Yeah. It's actually from our live show with Wild Beer Co. Ooh. So we do a live show every month with a specific brewery or on a specific theme in which we, we talk about that theme or that brewery and taste their beers. And you can buy the boxes in advance and taste along. Um, and we got a comment. Somebody had clearly watched this after the fact. Uh, and it's from Lee Cassidy and he says G'day fellas I don't think he's Australian because he's drinking wild beer he said really enjoyed the session with Wild Beer Co absolutely fantastic when Brett mentioned coriander seeds producing pineapple flavours mm. I'm fascinated do you know the style of beer he added it to at what stage of the brew process the seeds were added and if they were whole or crushed so he's clearly a home brewer he's looking to add that yeah so the reason I picked that out is because I had my mind blown maybe about a year ago I was drinking a left handed giant beer so an amazing brewery from bristol um and they on the ingredients list it was a new england ipa and on the ingredients list it said coriander seed Hmm. so i was like that's super interesting it's definitely not like trying to have a whip beer vibe there's no belgian yeast there was no the traditional orange peel that you'd also add to to a whip beer uh so i put a question out on twitter and i think it was left-handed giant that replied and said we add coriander seed because it's got high levels of and I forget which of the hop compounds it is, but it's either like geraniol, linalool, one of these flavor compounds. Oh, wow. Okay. So you can, you know, it's not amplifying what's already there. It's literally adding more of that flavor compound yes. to the beer. So it's something, is it a biotransformation thing that happens? Um, or it's, just, it's, it's there already? The, the sort I, of essential oil is within... I think the essential oil is within the coriander, but wow. you have to add it under the right conditions so that it doesn't biotransform. Right. So I think if you add it during the boil, uh, which is what you do with a whip beer, you won't get it. You'll get the spicy, uh, earthy... <laughs> like herbal kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, the character right. that you get in a whip beer. Yes. Whereas if you add it during fermentation, you won't destroy that compound and you'll get... Pineapple? Well, so Brett said pineapple. I get more kind of sweet mango, more fleshy kind of... So like a vibes. real ripe kind of thing. Wow. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and and so I've seen actually a couple of left-handed giant beers that are not at all Belgian inspired have coriander in where they've wanted to ele- elevate that kind of really ripe fruity element. So it's definitely a thing. Wowza. Uh, I, d- I don't think coriander is a, an allergen in any way, so I don't think they have to particularly declare it. But it's super interesting that we've found these other ways of doing it. Um I mean, it, it reminds me of, so, uh, Lagunitas, not a brewery we like to champion anymore because of their ownership of Heineken, but they um, they teamed up with maybe Berkeley University and released a, um, a genetically modified yeast yeah. that took, I think it was linalool from, maybe it was the basil plant, inserted it into the yeast... And then managed to get all of these really fruity, fresh flavours out of the yeast. So they're injecting what are generally perceived as hop compounds yes. into the yeast. And during the yeast fermentation process, you release those compounds again. So people are trying to find ways to use maybe less hops. Yeah. Which, you know, probably from a craft perspective, seems a bit... Well, it's cutting corners, which has never been the craft way. I think, I mean, it's not like you're... They're not adjuncts as such, are they? They're, they're GMO stuff, so you're getting different kind of uh, compounds and, and whatnot from the yeast. Because hops are really expensive as well, aren't they? This is the other thing. Yeah, I mean, that that's yeah that's what I was looking to get to. Like, yeah. It seems like a shortcut, but hops are incredibly expensive. The amount of hops you have to put into a New England IPA, there's such a volume of hops that yeah. you waste both beer and hops. Yeah. So people are looking at ways to go, well, we, we can get the same flavours by adding a little bit less hops, wasting a little bit less beer. And efficiency to a point yes. is good. Efficiency for, you know, with the idea of being sustainable mm-hmm. is a great thing. Efficiency in the way that many macro brews have done it, which is 
margin efficiency yeah, is yeah. different. So it might work out a little bit cheaper to be adding coriander or to be using GMO yeasts. But the intent should be to reduce wastage, to increase flavour, to increase reliability of flavour as well, because hops obviously vary a lot. Yeah, you, yeah, year on year. Year upon year, yeah, there's yeah, vintages, uh, um, there's seasons. I think it's... I mean, I'm, I'm quite anti-GMO stuff in general, but I think it's a way of pushing forward craft beer and, and like, sort of playing with the edges of stuff. And GMO, I think, also... Like there's there's probably lots of unethical stuff happening within GMO, but yeast is used actually a lot in genetically modified stuff. It's used a lot in medicine because it's a very simple little simple organism, organism. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's there's nothing that can really go wrong with it. So yeah. it's quite an ethical way of of playing with it. You're not going to create some kind of superhuman yeast that's going to take over the world. You're not modifying or invading on any people's you know rights or yeah i think people get a bit scared about like things like crops and also you know like grafting bits of pigs onto human dna and like all this kind of crazy (laughs) shit we're talking about single-celled organisms here pretty just pretty much yeah just making them uh have different kind of flavor profiles and esters yeah you're just changing little pathways so it's saying well while you produce this while you produce this co2 and this uh all these other compounds yeah I've just edited a little bit of DNA and added this extra flavour compound you're going to produce. Which is kind of exciting. And it's it's something that we've been doing as humans, I think, at least from the Victorian era. They used to hybridise uh, apple trees and, and um, flower varieties. Dogs, I mean, dogs. We've bred dogs to be, <laughs> yeah. you know, from Hop- like a husky to like a tiny little Hops chihuahua. Themselves. You know, Cascade hops, which is what started the American craft beer revolution, was, was a hybrid of, I think, an American hop and, and fungus yeah. to try and breed out uh, susceptibility to certain funguses. So we, we, you know, obviously it's very different when you're doing it in a lab with a needle and editing DNA. But at the end of the day, you're still editing DNA by forcing two things to, to kind of mate. And, you know, lots of the malts that we consume, whether it's beer or any other product, are intervened with. Mm. Not 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 necessarily genetically, but they are crossbred to have certain um, Yeah, you breed, you're breeding it for the, for the strength or the, the reliability of the crop. Yeah. Or, you know, it's... I think Golden Promise is the famous example of people trying to breed the, the perfect brewing malt. Yeah. Or, well, grain. Um, this is, I think, it's all really exciting stuff that is only going to get more exciting and more involved as we go on. Yeah. And there's more demand for it. And I think like the verdant thing that's going on is a great example of that. Like, for, like previously it was pretty hard to do like a really good New England homebrew, and now there's almost like this like magic secret sauce that you can just pour in. Obviously, some skill involved. <laughs> But uh... thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a hu- huge amounts of the flavour of the beer that we're drinking does come from that yeast. Yeah, and uh, I mean, there's no, as far as I know, there's no genetic modification that's been going on there. That would no. be quite Sorry. the story. I didn't want to imply that. <laughs> All I wanted to say was that, like, you know, the kind of, you know, the, the around the outer edges of stuff like yeast. A lot of people don't think about yeast when they're home brewing. I don't think, and it can be like amazingly. Yeah, I mean, stuff. the the wonderful story which is in our video is about how. Basically, Verdant were given a, a contaminated yeast batch hmm. um, and they took out one of those contaminants and that's become their house yeast. And that couldn't have been done without a laboratory um, and picking that out. So there's lots of exciting stuff happening within laboratories that is changing the way that beer is made, the way that food's made, the way that drugs are made as well. Yeah. Like GMO is, is, is heavily used in, in the production of drugs in a safe way to, to save lives. And... Um, well, we're just reaping the, the beery benefits right now. Um, and it's enabled me to brew my first good New England IPA. Not good, yeah. really good New England like, IPA. Like, excellent. So it looks like Brad and I are starting a session, so we're going to leave you there, I think. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in, both on YouTube and to us here, as always, on the Friday 5pm podcast at Friday. At Friday on 5pm. Yeah. Come on, Johnny. Keep it together. Yes. Uh, <laughs> just all you need to do, guys, search for The Bubble um on whatever you stream your your uh podcast podcast from and give us a listen give us a go why not give us a listen and give us a rating as well so we put an appeal out to get some ratings from people that really really helped us and now we're in the top 100 podcasts for food and drink in the uk which is crazy (laughs) so please do rate us if you enjoy uh what we're doing 
Um, and if you're listening to the podcast, we don't know the YouTube channel, head to youtube.com slash, slash the craft beer channel, I think. Or craft beer channel, craft one beer of the channel. two. Uh, otherwise, we'll catch you next Friday. Uh, and obviously, every single Wednesday at 4 p.m., we will have another video going live. To homebrew, Bradley. Oh, to homebrew, mate. We love you. Mm-hmm.